So now that we have all our sources ready, let's do something pretty cool because so far we've been manually adding stuff to our database every single time an HTTP request to create our user or a shot. So let's, let's create a function that will automatically seed our database. Here in the root of my application, I'm going to create a file called seed.js. You can name it whatever you like and you can put whatever you like. You just need to remember to reference it after. We're going to use a library called Faker to auto-generate data for us. So this is the GitHub account for Faker.js. As you can see, it has almost 15,000 stars. It is quite popular because, well, it's very handy, as you're going to see in a bit. If you scroll down a bit, you can see the API. Here's the address for the API documentation. And uh, here, if you click on Usage, this is how you can use it. You require it, or we're going to import it. And use faker.internet.email, like this. And if you scroll down, the API methods has a, a bunch of other stuff that you can randomize for our application. So let's get started, and uh, we're going to create this function that is going to auto-generate users for us. So first, I'm going to install Faker. So npm install dash d, because we only need it for development, Faker. OK, so I'll close my terminal. Here now I can import it. Uh, we're gonna also need to import the user model. Now we can uh, start. First we're gonna export. Here we can name whatever you like as well. This is just uh, so we know that we're gonna be seeding the user's database. You're gonna make it async because we need to wait on for data and other stuff. So async. And here let's just do our try catch. And we're gonna console log the error error. Alright. So before we continue uh, with the function, I'm just gonna Execute the function so we can run this file and test while we're going while while you're doing it. So now let's generate a bunch of users with fake information using the faker library. So I'm gonna create a, a variable to say how many users we want to generate. Quantity. Let's say 10 for now. So it will be faster to create them. And now we need an array that is going to hold all our users. So users, and we create an empty array. We're going to fill it up this array with the data now. So now we can do a for loop. Let users, resetting the users numbers, and then we can uh, use the quantity to generate up to the point, and then we call it plus plus to leave the loop. So here we can do user.push, push Push is the array method that is going to push the data to it and here we call new user, this is from our model it's going to create a new user for us now we can add our information, so email let's go check out the documentation so we can see what we need to add so email, faker internet.email so let's check what else do we need for here User model, so username, photo, biography, URL, and admin. Password. Faker dot. Let's see what they have in here for us. So if you scroll down all the way to internet, we have password over here. So faker dot internet dot password. over here next we have username photo URL faker dot username on the internet right here now for the photo URL let's use an avatar which is over here a 
about that. You also have a URL and a biography. So the you faker here on the Lauren you have the sentence or a paragraph. Let's do a paragraph. Not internet is in the Lauren. Now URL. You have a URL here on the internet. So next we have its admin. So is admin. Let's see what we have for admin. Random Boolean. Okay, now we can save it. Now we can console log this uh, user array users just to see what's going on. So I'm gonna close this because I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna open up my terminal. And here I'm gonna run the seed file, which is in my root. So I'm, I'm gonna call node because you're using the Imports, we need to pass a required ESM and then I can run seed.js. I is not defined, it's because I used U over here for users and I over here. Here also with users and with users because name users array so here on the internet is username with capital n now let's try again sorry about all these mistakes there you go Ooh, now we have an array and we have a bunch of users we got the user id because we're calling a new user over here and mongoose knows that we want to create a user and uh, whenever you create a resource mongodb is always going to add the id for us so here we have id email password we have an address i'm just going to copy this address there you go see you have a, some random people behind the scenes um Faker use UI faces, the website, to get some information. There we go. So we have a bunch of random people with random faces. Here we got our, our paragraph, a description, we have some people's website. And we also get a random, if it's admin, the boolean, which is neat. So we want to create 10. We got 10. If you do... dot length and now if you run again we got 10 over here so so far it's working now we need to push this and save it to our database so far we haven't got anything here so let's um, check it out how to do that i'm going to remove this console log we know that it works we're gonna get that um, array and we're gonna call for each on it because we want to pick up every single user on it and push it to our database so here user one user and we're going to call the database user dot create user here if you console log the user and we run that we get not an array, but a bunch of uh, objects, which each of them represents the one user over here. That's what the for each is doing for us. So now if you call this function over here, user.create users, if you call it save, it will probably save, but the thing is that our model it's hashing the password on this pre-save hook over here 
Whenever using the life cycle, the life cycle hook from uh, Mongoose, you need to run create, otherwise the function will just uh, be saved, for example, and it's not gonna get passed through these hooks. So we need to call create. So now let's try it out. We should have a MongoDB on. Now we can um, run the node seed. And this is not gonna work because we have the connection to our database in here inside our app and our application has control over this database because you're calling it over here. So this function that is outside has nothing to do with our app at the moment. So instead of calling the seed users over here, we should call it inside our database. Because here in this function is where everything about our database is gonna happen. So we call it seed users over here. Let's import. From, we need to go one up. Seed. So we are zipping the seeders over here. If you have more, we add them down here. So let's try it out now and see if it works. But instead of uh, calling this straight, because now it's not going to do anything, we're, we have the function, but it is not executing in here anymore. So this won't work. Let's just run our app. We got no feedback in here. We should put a console log down here to see if it, have, if it worked. Let's refresh. Now I have development, users, and here we go. We have all your users saved to our database, 10 of them. If you go back here and let's say, let's put 100. And when I go back in here, it take a while, but it's here. Now we have probably 110 because you already had uh, 10 over here. So instead of doing this uh, like this, let's actually delete, empty the database before we save this new array because we are just testing. So it doesn't matter what data we have in there. So here we need to call um, user.remove. This will delete everything from the database. You, you can pass the object or not. Remember in the user find, dot find, you can either pass the object with some, whatever you want to remove, but in our case, we can leave it without. And here we are doing the await because we want this to run before this one. So it's gonna await for this uh, remove and then it's gonna run the users uh, for each. Let's create a console log over here. Users collection has been populated. There you go. So now here lies a problem. Our application is gonna keep on adding. Every time you save, we are restarting the server and our database has is being populated over and over again. So this is not really like, I mean, we need the information, but we don't need it to be running all the time. Once when the server starts is enough. So we need to do a function that is gonna check this database, see if there is anything in it. And then if there is, we don't run this. So here on the top, let's uh, do a if statement. Well, first we need to get the collection and store it somewhere. So users collection. And here we can do user.find to find everything. But we need to call await because we're gonna need this information before we do anything else. So await all the users. And down here we can do a if statement. If user collection dot length it's um, bigger than one we can uh, return so 
Whenever you return a function, this won't run. Whatever is below won't run. This is terminating the function. So if the user's uh, collection is bigger than one, we can now uh, return and be done with it. So now that you, we reload, the function didn't save it anymore. Just to make clear on what we're doing over here. So I'm gonna put two over here. I'm gonna comment it out this, and I'm gonna comment it out this one to remove, and I'm gonna delete my database. So I'm gonna close, and I'm gonna save it. Here is the first function we created. It's just run it mindlessly. So the run was populated. If I reload, I have my two users over here. If I do anything and I save it, we'll keep on adding. Every time I save, we'll add some more, whatever number we have over here, some more users. So now we're gonna remove everything. Before running the two users, we remove everything. So now we only have two at any given time. And uh, now to stop this function to running every time, as you can see here, it just run, but I haven't refreshed yet. So I have uh, the 36E and 36F. If I reload, I have two different new users over there. So that's not really performant because it's gonna be running all the time and consuming your computer cycles. So this function is gonna check and uh, because uh, we have more than one, it didn't run. So even if I reload over here, I have the same two users that we had before. So basically this is the functionality of uh, seeding our database. Here we have a, uh, on our database, we are calling that function we created, and this is how it works.